Hey, Lucard here. What's the best number of players for a D&D game? Today, we're gonna to take a look at some of the pros and cons of different numbers of players. Now, obviously, this information is based on my own personal experience, but I also got some input from the D&D community over on Reddit, and also, I did a poll on Twitter. So hopefully, this information isn't just one man's opinion quite so much as it is a collection of opinions from the D&D community across different platforms. Now, the most popular number of players definitely came out to be about four, but we're gonna leave with my personal favorite because it's my video, five. Now, I generally keep five players in all of my D&D groups for a few different reasons. The main reason I like five players is that it handles absences very, very well. For instance, if you have a player that can't make a game session or even if a player leaves your group, that still gives you four players, which is plenty to run a game. Due to people having real lives and things coming up from time to time, it's normal for a player to miss a game every so often. So I think it's just a good idea to plan for that eventuality. Next, with five players, it's a lot easier to fill certain party roles, like if you wanna have some frontline melee types, some spellcasters, if you think you need a healer, five players gives plenty of opportunity for people to fill those roles, and they still get to probably play something that they will enjoy playing. This helps guarantee that players get to play the class that they really want to without feeling pressure to play something just because the group needs to have that class or that role filled. Now for some drawbacks of five players. The game slows down. That is, everything just takes longer. Social interactions, combats, decision making. <sighs> Finally, individual characters get less of a spotlight in the game, there's less time for them to shine, so to speak, and it's more challenging for the DM to bring in things from their backstories, because you just have so many of them. Now, let's talk about four players in a group. As I mentioned, four players was by far the most popular option, both over on Reddit and in the Twitter poll I did. If I'm honest, and why wouldn't I be? Four is actually my favorite number of players to have in a group as well. The main reason I prefer five is how well it deals with absences. Anyway, four players is great because fewer players means each player gets more table time, more spotlight, more time to shine with individual actions. It's also easier to bring backstories into play. The game also moves along a lot faster because there are only four players instead of five who want to interrogate the crap out of that innocent shopkeeper. And group decisions don't take nearly as long. Never underestimate the value of making decisions faster. Never. You underestimate the power of the dark side. If you will not fight, then you will meet your destiny. <laughs> Filling roles might be a little bit of a stretch, but it's usually not that bad with four players to find melees, spellcasters, and all that good stuff. The main drawback for me of just having four players in a group is that it doesn't deal with absences very well. If you're missing one player, well then you're down to three players, and you can still run the game with three players, but if you're counting on four, then certain things like combats might be a little bit more challenging. And even if you adjust the encounters, then your group might not have all the needed roles. Imagine if your frontline fighter doesn't show up, and all you have left are are the cleric, the bard, and the wizard. That might be a little tough. And if two players don't show up, well then you're probably just not gonna play D&D that day. See, with a five player group, if two players don't show up, well then you still have three and you could probably still play D&D. Okay. Three players. First of all, running a game for only three players is an absolute blast. I've had to do it before when a couple players couldn't make it, and it was absolutely awesome. With three players, all of the benefits of having fewer players are amplified, and all of the drawbacks are as well. See, if your group normally has three players, and a player can't make a game session, or if a player leaves a group, running D&D is going to be very challenging. So, while running a game with only three players is a lot of fun, it simply represents too much risk for me to be a viable option. Risk? Luke, what are you talking about? This is a game. Who cares? I care, and my players care. Nobody wants the game to stop because a player can't make a game session or a player leaves a group, unless you're in a crappy game, and that's a whole different story. Now, there are lots of DMs out there that run games with only two players or even one player. I suspect that groups of this size are quite a bit rarer than the normal size groups. However, people over on Reddit say that it's a lot of fun. Actually, now that I think about it, back in high school, I DM'd for just one player. We did it for about a year or so, and it wasn't tons of fun. Of course, my memory kind of sucks too, so I might just be making that up. 
Anyway, with that few players, you definitely need to handcraft your games, especially the combat, in order to accommodate only one or two players. Unless, of course, you have each player run two PCs. Problem solved. Now, what about large groups? I'm talking six, seven, or eight players. Sound crazy? Well, it can be done, and some DMs really dig it. One challenge with running groups that big is that everything is going to take a lot longer. I'm talking social interactions, combat, and decision making. And when things take longer, you run the chance of boring some of your players because they just don't have as much of a chance to participate in the action. My advice for this is to keep things moving. For instance, think of ways to make combats go faster. Don't let players take more than 30 seconds to decide what they're going to do. And let's think about it. Supposedly, one round of combat takes six seconds, right? And everything is happening simultaneously. So why would you let one player take several minutes to decide what spell he's going to cast? Let's speed things up, huh? Another thing that you're going to want to make sure that you're doing is pulling around the table and specifically asking all of the players what they want to do. Because remember, some players are not as outgoing as others, and if you don't ask them, they might not speak up. Or they might just have difficulty getting a word in because all the other players are constantly talking. Actually, that last bit of advice is probably a good idea for running a group of any size. I think running a group that large is probably worth trying to see if you like it. And if you don't, and it fails, just split the group into two and run two games. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Let me know down in the comments how many players you think is best for a D&D game. Till next time, let's play D&D.